you have your Bible, you need a Bible after hearing all that, take it and open it to uh, John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1. We have made a decision at the beginning of this year that uh, we are going to uh, seek to do everything that we can to uh, renew our walk with God in the coming year. I think after the last year, uh, we've been put to a test, and we uh, hope that we have done well, but uh, I will tell you that uh, we have done as much as God has done within us, that uh, the same things have befallen all of us, and we need to have the wisdom and the will of God in our life. We need godly decisions in the coming year. And the way that we're going to find that walk with God and those godly decisions that we need is to have the spiritual disciplines in our life. And those are those things that Jesus did every day. There were some things that he knew, he knew were important. And if he practiced them, if he, if he thought these are things that I must do every day, then what does that say about you and I? Should we do them? Should they be a priority in our life? Are we going to be intentional about those things? And that's really what we're going to talk about today, is prioritizing our time with God. You know, to me it's flattering to think that the God of the universe would want to spend time with me. It's amazing to me to know that right now, in this moment, I have God's undivided attention. I mean, there's not something that's going on around the world that's going to take his attention away. God is God, and he is able and desires to be right here. He wants to be in this moment. And the thing about this is, he can speak to me, and he can speak to you, and, and he can do all of this absolutely together. But most people who do not spend a daily time with God, maybe sometime in their life they did, but they tried, and they found it unproductive. And they said, well, it just didn't work for me. Let me just remind you, we're supposed to be disciples. That means we're supposed to be learning. I don't know too many people that hit a home run the first time they go to bat. I don't know too many people that hit a home run every time they're at bat. And I know when I get up to preach, I hardly get a base hit, much less anything else. Amen? So we just, we, what we need to do is spend time with the one who can be there with us. And that's what we want to do today. So take your Bibles, look in John chapter number 1. And if you would, would you just stand with me in honor of reading God's Word? And for those of you who are watching online, if you can, uh, I think God will bless you if you can stand for this moment uh, in honoring God's Word as well. If you're driving down the road and listening to this, please don't try to do anything crazy. Amen? And we'll all be grateful for that. John chapter 1. John was, writ John was written by the uh, Apostle John. His brother James had already been martyred for the faith. His dear friends Peter, Andrew, they're gone. Matthew. Judas the Less. They're gone. Paul that had gotten saved later but had been the great church planner. Matter of fact, John's last place of service was at a church that, that uh, Paul started at Ephesus. And he ministered there until they couldn't shut him up, they couldn't make him stop, so they just sent him to a, the Isle of Patmos where he would be alone there. But the Gospel of Matthew had been written, the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Luke had already been written. But there was something unique that God wanted to say through the one that Jesus called the Beloved. And as John begins his writing in the Gospel of John, he begins by honing in on who the Lord is and who He is to us. Read with me in verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in, in, in the beginning with God. All things were made uh, by him, through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. 
Look what it says in verse 14. And the word became flesh. He says in verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. Here he is telling us this is Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah of the world, my Savior in my heart. He says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he's speaking about him and those that were living and were his apostles. And he says, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John, here he's speaking of John the Baptist. He said, John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this was he of whom I said, he, was, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received. And grace for grace. I tell you what, I am so very grateful that I do not stand in my own righteousness. I have what I have because of the grace of God. May we never look at anyone else in any other way than the grace of God. Because if we are recipients of grace, we need to make sure that we give that same grace. John knew that what he had he had from the blessings of the hand of God by his grace. He says, of his fullness we have received in grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, here he's speaking of Jesus, he has declared him and he's doing it today what we need what we want what we must have is the word of God he must speak to us from his heart to our heart what a blessing that is let's go to the Lord in prayer father God what a privilege to be able to say that we know you to have your eyes upon us. You know every hair in our head, every thought in our heart. Lord, you know the desires. And Lord, you know we love you. You know I love you. But Lord, you also know when my love wanes and I let other things get in the way. Lord, I, I let distractions come and distract to take away. But Lord, I, I love you and I, I, I so seek to prioritize you and choose you and choose you every day. So, Lord, speak. Speak to us plainly and clearly, for we need you. Holy Spirit, meet us here and draw us close. And, sir, we will praise your name because of it. In your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our words help us to communicate. They share what is in our heart, what is in our thoughts. It shares our life, our desires, our wishes, and our beliefs. And in the same way, John says that Jesus is the expression of the heart of God. He is the Word. He is the Logos. He is the way to communicate the, the truth of who Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We find all of this in God, in Jesus. Jesus is the Word that lets us know the heart and mind of Christ. He will, as it says in verse 18, he will declare it. And he brings us to the Father. But sin, when we chose sin, led us into darkness. Darkness is defined as the absence of light. But darkness cannot overpower light. Darkness may be there. And by the way, Satan is called the power of darkness, Luke twenty two fifty three, 53. And there is a battle for our hearts and our minds and our soul. Satan wants us to walk in darkness. He wants us to live in the darkness of the lie of sin. But Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus comes and dispels darkness. That's what we need. We need the light of God in our life every day. God's Word says this, Psalms 119 verse 11, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. 
I need to not just have this, but I must, uh, as David said, I must take it and eat it. And it will be like honeycomb. It will be sweet to me, but it will nourish me. I must take the word of God and eat it and let it live within me. We must prioritize. We must choose. We must desire to spend time with Jesus in the word of God. This is not everything God knows, but it's everything he knows that we need, everything he wants us to know. And if you're looking for wisdom and truth and you're looking for it in some other way, you might find some nugget just by chance. But when you come to the Word of God, you will find all of the wisdom of the goodness of God. Moses said to the children of Israel right before they were ready to go into the Promised Land, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, hear these words. He said, the Word of God is very near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that you may do it. He's not simply here to give us things that we're to read and, and, and study as if it's just a, a, a grand gathering of truth like you would gather books in a library. They are to be lived. He, they are given to us so that we can uh, have them as a part of our life so that we can use them for the benefit that will come from it. So let me share some things with you that I think that we need to do when we seek to look at the Word of God and let it become real to our life. The first thing is, is we need to be humble. We, we need to be humble so that we will prioritize and spend that, choose that time. If you have your Bibles, look over in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Pride will tell you that you got it. Pride will tell you you know it. I was speaking with a person one time, and we were, I, I was, said something from the Bible, and, and I think they took it that I was trying to, to um, uh, insult them in some way. And they said, oh, I've already read that. Well, I haven't, I've read it, but um, it hadn't got enough of me yet. Amen. I must come to it every day so that it'll get more of me. Pride will, pride will lift you up and keep you from God. But if you will humble yourself, you can find everything it is that God has for you. In Deuteronomy chapter number 8, he is reminding the children of Israel, after 40 years of being out there in the wilderness, circling a mountain for 38 years, come on now, it's time to move on, he is saying to them. But he wanted to remind them of a few things. In Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 1, the Word of God says this, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. I mean, we know that, don't we? Y'all look up at me. Y'all been in church? Y'all been in Sunday school? You've read the Word of God? You've heard? Have y'all heard a few messages? And, and, and have you ever heard that you need to take the Word of God and live it every day? But I tell you what, I need more of it in me. But before I can get more of it in me, I've got to get me in the book. So he says here, you must learn to, to observe it. Carefully go before it. That you may live. Now that tells you that if you don't, there's an opposite that might come, and that's death. But that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness, now listen to me now, to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep these commandments or not. So he's put, this, he's put all of these different circumstances in life, and they're a test. Does anybody think that we had a test in 2020? Did we go through any difficulties or hardships? Did we, did we face some things and go, oh me? Did we say, what, what do I need to do, God? Where is the wisdom? What would you have for me to know? How should I live? If we've ever gone through these things, evidently I think we have, and we know that we, this need of it. But he says here, I, I, I've, I've did this to humble you. 
find out. But look in verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word. Man lives by every word. Man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So he says, let me teach you something. And they're out there in the wilderness. They get hungry. Any, any of y'all ever get hungry? You ever get hungry in church? That would been a good time for an amen. You ever get hungry in your church and your stomach begins to growl? Isn't it funny that the only time your stomach growls is in church when you're trying to be quiet and you're trying all these little things to make it be quiet? And it's just saying, preacher, if you don't hush, I'm going to starve to death, right? I need to go get me some nourishment. Well, I'm trying to give you some nourishment before you go get some physical nourishment. And God says, before in your day, before you go live your day, you need some nourishment. And he put this thing before them. You don't just go down and have the Walmart out in the wilderness. You don't have the Kroger or the Ingles or something like that or, or the McDonald's or the whatever else, you know, get some fast food. We live in a very fast society. We want everything now. He says, but you've got to go out in the morning. And he had this stuff in the, out there called manna. And you had to take it home. And then you had to make it up. And then you cooked your bread. And it was, the uh, Bible says manna was the, the food of angels. So can I say it was an angel food cake, so to speak, right? And they would go out every day and they would gather it. And I don't know what it tasted like. Don't get me wrong. You think you're going to go down to, to the store this afternoon and get some manna. Well, listen. This was what they had that would give them substance from the day. And it was good. And it was wonderful. But you know, some of us, we, we, we say, well, I, I, I tell you what, I'll go out on Sunday and I'll gather my manna and I'll gather so much that I won't need it for the rest of the week. Here's the thing about it. The manna would only last one day. It would spoil at the end of the day. So if you, how many of y'all get hungry every day? Amen? Well, you want something to eat, right? Well, you had to go in the morning and gather it and bring it home and prepare it and cook it so that you could eat of it. So on Sunday, you got what you needed for Sunday. But on Monday, you had to go again. And on Tuesday, you had to go again. And on Wednesday, you had to go again. And Thursday, you had to go again. And if you wanted to eat on Friday, you had to go again. But on that day, he let you gather enough for Friday and Saturday because God always takes care of every need that we had. And you had to have it daily. And the disciples were with Jesus and said, teach us to pray. And Jesus told them a model prayer. And in that model prayer, he said, give us this day our daily bread yet too many people who call themselves christian come to the house of god on sunday and they say pastor cook us a meal and give us this meal and it will be enough to take care of us all week long and they go home and they take their sword and they lay it down by the table and they don't pick it up and eat on the word of god every day He said, I gave you this to humble you so that you would know that what has, is there for you has been provided. But you must go, listen to me now, every day and gather it and prepare it and then eat of it. Every day, every day, every day. Psalms 119, 105 says this, your word is, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Day by day, we've got to go. They would not have all the lighting like we have today. They would take a little saucer of oil and light it, and it would simply be a, a, a lamp unto their feet to help them take the next step. But so many of us, we want that light like it's on the front of the train that shines way on out the tracks. Lord, 
I need to know what you're going to do today. Lord, I need to know what you're going to do between now and, and Resurrection Sunday and into the summer. And Lord, tell me all the things that I need to do in 2021, Lord, because I don't know. And I'm the pastor of the church, and, and I'm supposed to help lead these people and, and minister to these people. So Lord, you need to give me a word for all of 2021. And as a matter of fact, if you would, while you're at it, I need to know what you're going to do in the next three to five years. And Lord, I, I'm starting to get a little older where you take care of me for the next 10 years. And, and let me know what I need to do 20 years from now. And he's like, I will, one day at a time. It's a culmination. We grow strong, not by going down to the buffet and just eating till we can't eat anymore. And then we're good for a week or a month. We need daily nourishment. That's what makes you grow strong. Can I say it this way? And grow muscle. Janice said to get off the milk and get to the meat so that we can grow strong in the things of the Lord. How many of you have found out that during the past year that there are areas in your life that you have not found that yourself to be fully strong in the ways of the Lord. How many of you have found yourself in difficult circumstances that you were not looking for, but they found you, and you had to trust in him with all your heart? You had to lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways you had to acknowledge him and let him lead your path. Let him take you every day. We found ourselves, we have, we have found ourselves as a people of loss. We found ourselves in a people of turmoil. We have found ourselves broken and in need. You can trust the word of God. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says this, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the things that I send it. God knows what you need. And when you practice the word of God, it's not going to come back and lie to you. It's not going to hurt you. It's here to help you. And I love that the Word of God, when, you're, when you take it in, it, it, it produces passion in your life. One person was giving me a, a compliment, and I, I really took it as a compliment. They say, preacher, when you preach, you're a passionate preacher. I tell you what, the Word of God has done something in my life. Matter of fact, last night, I got on a Facebook, and I wanted to make sure that I hadn't missed anybody's birthday and all those kind of things. And I was looking... Right before I laid down, I looked at Facebook and I saw a post from a, uh, someone that I went to high school with and graduated high school with, a very kind friend, a, guy, a good guy, but he's made some wrong decisions in his life. He's gone down a path. Now, he grew up and he knew the ways of God, but he's made some wrong decisions and it's taken him into a, a, a very dark place in his life. And he had, he had shared a post that someone else had, had posted and, and said that you really could not trust God and, and that God would, would let you down and the ways of God were, were not the ways that were real. And, and something began to boil in me and I could not go to sleep. I was up six times last night. Six times I was awakened. And I would go back to sleep and God would wake me up again. And I kept thinking about this and I wanted to, to, to write my friend something. But I wanted to make sure that I, I, I wrote it the way in love and in peace. But there was something that was boiling within me. There was something that would make, make, make me so passionate. And, and I want my brother that, that is a kind man, but he's, he's living in darkness. And he thinks the, the ways of darkness are the way to go now. And I, I so much want for him to see the love of God and the joy and the peace that God could give. Jeremiah said in chapter 20, he said, His word in my heart is like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Do y'all know what that's like? When you read the word of God and, and God speaks from the page and into your heart and you can't get it off of your mind all day and it comes into our life with conviction, but it also comes into our life with production. Hebrews 4 tells us this, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and, and joints and marrow. And listen to this now and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And what I find is when I get in God's word and his word speaks his heart 
and he speaks it into my heart. And I get a little case of little holy heartburn. And it begins to produce. And it begins to work within me. It speaks. It convicts. It lovingly leads. It helps. Sometimes it asks me, do you love me? Do you trust me? And I think of the doxology of the soul. I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about Paul when he was talking to the church of uh, Colossians, the, the Colossae church. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. That's what we need in our lives. And he said, richly in our wisdom and in our teaching and admonishing to encourage you with all psalms. You know that book in the middle of the Bible called the Psalms? That was the psalm book. So he says, with all psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I get in the Word and He gives me a Word. And then it, it, it's like He's singing in my heart through the rest of the day. Beauty, me, beautiful melody in my life. It's the expression of my love. Now let me share with you some very practical things that y'all need. I, I, I want to share with you. When you find your Gethsemane, when you find your, your place to God, you need to find your Bible. I mean the Bible for you. When I grew up, I w- went to a church, and uh, the pastor was my dad, and it, it was a King James church. And my dad preached out of the King James Bible, and that's what I read, and that's what I had. But I found that I wanted to become a student of the Bible, and uh, I found that I, sometimes I had difficulty with the Shakespearean English. King James was first translated in 1611. I have nothing against it, nothing against it at all. But I have people come to me all the time, and they say, Pastor, I have trouble reading. I say, well, find a Bible that you can read and you can understand. That's what moved me to the new King James. He got rid of, he got rid of the hithers and thithers and the heres and thous and these, and, but it just made it my own. And I don't really care what version you find. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. I, I tell everybody today the English Standard Version is a wonderful translation. And, and, and the CEV is a wonderful translation. A lot of people love in the NIV. But make sure that you're getting a translation. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the New Testament in Greek and Aramaic. But you need to find one, a version that actually goes to the original language and says this is the word and this is what that word means and translates it over. Be very careful of going to a, some places that are like a paraphrase, like the Living Bible or Eugene Peterson's The Message. If you want to read that, all fine and good. But you need more than that because you, all those are, or that is, someone reading it and them saying, this is what I think it says. You need more than that. So find you a Bible, right? And number two, find a study Bible. A study Bible. Uh, this is uh, the one I'm using right now. And... You can tell up here it's got all the the Bible part of it, and down here at the bottom, it's got a lot of footnotes. I'm saying that to say this. At the top, the Word of God is the inspired, infallible, inerrant, inexhaustible Word. It will not let you down. Amen? The footnotes are not. Now, if you're quoting the footnotes as if it's as true as this up here. Now, I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm saying the footnotes are written by man. The Word of God is written by God. I think you need study helps, but you need to to trust this more than you trust this. Let this be an aid and a help. I also think, like Janice said, if you can find a concordance or a lexicon that can help you understand, maybe a Bible dictionary, maybe even a Bible that that talks about the, the, the lands that they were living in in that day when they wrote it. How many of you have a smartphone? How many of you think your smartphone's not all that smart? Amen? But there are many apps that are on that. And you can find an app on your phone. The one that I use is absolutely free. It's called the Blue Letter Bible. 
You'll find a concordance there. You'll find lexicons. You'll find a verse-by-verse -verse translation from other translations where you can study that. It will take you to all the places where that word or part of that word is you may study a verse is used in all the rest of the Word of God. Absolutely free. It's right there in front of you. But you need to have something. Don't find your Gethsemane. I know your time's important. Spend time in the Word. And we're going to talk about other things. And it's good to have other Bible studies. It's good to have other books to read or other devotions. But make sure that those don't replace the Word of God. Now, when I, for years and years and years, when I would read the Word of God, this is what I would do. I would read every day a certain amount of chapters in the New Testament. I would read a certain amount of chapters every day in the Old Testament. I would read three of the Psalms every day, and I would read one of the Proverbs depending on what day of the month. Today is the January 17th. I would read Proverbs number 17. And when I read a word proverb, I was looking for God to highlight one verse out of that. If I did this every day, I would read through the New Testament many times during the year. Usually I read through the New Testament between 12, 7 and 12 times every year. I would read through the Old Testament at least once, usually uh, close to twice during the year. I would read through the book of Psalms about three times a year. And I would read the book of Proverbs every month. But you need a systematic way of reading it. Sometimes people say, I'm going to spend my time with God. I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to read right here. Well, I'm in Daniel's chapter 7. Well, amen. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But don't let that be the whole way. If you're going to cook a meal, don't just get a little bit of peanut butter and a, a little bit of rockwurst and uh, a little bit of cabbage, you know. I mean, you might just go to the kitchen and say, this is all I got left. Look, all of God's food is good, amen? But there's a systematic way of, of learning and growing and going forward. And I suggest that you find your way, okay? Now, Adrian Rogers, one of my heroes, he would have a Bible on his, on his uh, uh, desk, and he would go in, and sometimes he would just say, God, I need a word from you. And he would just flip it over and put his finger down. And uh, this one that I just flipped over to is in Luke chapter 4, verse 31. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. Well, amen, here I am teaching you. I'm not saying that you can't get a verse to help you for what you're needing that day, but I'm telling you we need a style of, of systematically looking at the Word of God. Now, I'm going to share a lot more in the weeks that are ahead. I'm going to try to add something to your quiet time every week when we're looking at this. But let me just end in closing and saying this. When I began and said it's a very humbling thing to think that, flattering, really, that God would want to spend time with me. Every day I wake up and I say, Lord, I love you amazed that you're listening. Lord, I know me, and I need you. For me personally, at the beginning of the day, I'd say, Lord, let me walk in your forgiveness. Remind me before I sin that that is sin, and help me to choose not to sin. But Lord, as I go to your word, and I open up your word, Take my hand and lead me. Let's walk. Let's talk. Teach me what I need to know. If Jesus were walking with me today, he may be walking around and he may look at something and say, Brian, did you see that? Let me talk to you about that. And I would be his disciple. I would be a learner. And he'd tell me what I needed to know that day. And That's what I do when I open the word of God. Have you ever heard anybody say, it's boring? I will tell them to pray and open up their eyes to the Lord. God's word won't return void. He'll speak. It's amazing to me that he tells me exactly what I need for what I'm facing that day. John 1, verse 3, it says that he was the... Uh, author of creation. All things were made through him. There was nothing made that was made. He created it all. All the wisdom of all the glories of God. And it's like he's saying, let's take a walk in my glory. I don't know when I'm going to heaven, but I tell you one thing, I know I'm going. Amen.
And I'm going to spend my eternity in the presence of the glory of God. And I'm going to spend my eternity learning the vastness of the unending beauty, peace, joy, love of God. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to get to experience all of it throughout all of eternity. But you see, I also get to experience it January 17th. 2021 in the year of our Lord and walk with him today. So Lord, I say, speak, me, speak to me today. I need you today. Meet me here, O oh Lord, today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be with your people. Lord, we can't, I can't give enough they can't gather enough to make it through the week on their own. Lord, they're going to have to learn to go out and gather that from you, that daily bread, so they can be nourished and strong and prepared to walk with you and hide your word in our hearts that we would not sin against you. Lord, it, let, it, let, let it truly be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Father, humble us. We need you. We can't do it on our own. And Lord, if there's anyone that hears my voice now that has yet to trust you as their Savior, the Lord of their life, God, I just pray that right now that they will begin to hear you call their name and convict them of their sin. Let them know, Lord, that you would remove their sins as far as the east is from the west. If they'll just repent of them, come to you and ask you to forgive them, come into, ask you to come into their life and take over their heart and save them, make them pure and clean. Lord, that they would commit to be a disciple, a follower of you. All of their life live for you. Lord, I know it's about a relationship. It's about knowing you. It's about obeying you and walking in your peace. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today that has not made that commitment, maybe they're just watching online, but Lord, speak to them personally and call them to yourself right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.